Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we're on day 146. I am so happy that you're here today and I hope your day's going great. We're going to be reading out of Deuteronomy chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 33, Matthew chapter 23, and then we're going to close out the day with Psalm 88, but only verses 1 through 10. So let's get started with Deuteronomy chapter 2. Here we go. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way to the Red Sea, as Yahweh spoke to me, and we encircled Mount Seir many days. Yahweh spoke to me, saying, You have encircled this mountain long enough. Turn northward. Command the people, saying, You are to pass through the border of your brothers, the children of Esau, who dwell in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, be careful, don't contend with them, for I will not give you any of their land. No, not so much as for the sole of the foot to tread on, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau for a possession. You shall purchase food from them for money that you may eat. You shall also buy water from them for money that you may drink. For Yahweh your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has known your walking through this great wilderness. These forty years, Yahweh your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. So we passed by from our brothers, the children of Esau, who dwell in Seir, from the way of the Arabah, from Elath, and from Ezion Geber. We turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Yahweh said to me, don't bother Moab, neither contend, uh, contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of his land for a possession, because I have given Ar to the children of Lot for a possession. The Emim lived there before, a great and numerous people, and tall as the Anakim. These also are considered to be uh, Rephaim, as the Anakim, but the Moabites call them Imam. The Horites also lived in Seir in the past, but the children of Esau succeeded them. They destroyed them from before them and lived in their place, as Israel did to the land of his possession, which Yahweh gave to them. Now rise up and cross over to the brook Zered, we went over to the brook Sered. The days in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we had come over the brook Zered were 38 years until all the generation of the men of war were consumed from the middle of the camp as Yahweh swore to them. Moreover, Yahweh's hand was against them to destroy them from the middle of the camp until they were consumed. So when all the men of the war were consumed, the dead from among the people, Yahweh spoke to me, saying, You are to pass over Ar, the border of Moab, today. When you come near the border of the children of Ammon, don't bother them, nor contend with them, for I will not give you any of the land of the children of Ammon for a possession, because I have given it to the children of Lot for a possession." That also is considered a land of Rephaim. Rephaim lived there in the past, but the Ammonites call them Zamamam, a great people, many and tall, as the Anakim. But Yahweh destroyed them before Israel, and they succeeded them, and lived in their place, as he did for the children of Esau, who dwell in Seir, when, the, uh, when he destroyed the Horites from before them, and they succeeded them and lived in their place even to this day. Then the Avim, who lived in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaftorim, who came out of Kaftor, destroyed them and lived in their place. Rise up. Take your journey and pass over the village of the Arnon. Behold, 
I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Today I will begin to put the dread of you and the fear of you on the peoples who are under the whole sky, who shall hear the report of you and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Ked uh, Kedamoth to Sahon, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through your field. I will go along by the highway. I will turn neither to the right hand nor to the left, and you shall sell me food for money, that I may eat, and give me water for money, that I may drink. Just let me pass through on my feet. As the children of Esau who dwell in Seir and the Moabites who dwell in Ar did to me, until I pass over the Jordan into the land which Yahweh our God gives us. But Sahan, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him, for Yahweh your God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into your hand as it is today. Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have begun to deliver up Sahan and his land before you. Begin to possess that you may inherit his land. Then Sahan came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Jahaz. Yahweh, our God, delivered him up before us, and we struck him, his sons, and all his people. We took all his cities at that time and utterly destroyed every inhabited city with the woman and the little ones. We left no one remaining, only the livestock we took for plunder for ourselves with the plunder of the um, cities which we had taken. From Arawur, Arawur, which is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon and the city that is in the valley even to Gilead there was not a city too high for us Yahweh our God delivered up all before us only to the land of the children of Ammon you didn't come near all the banks of the river Jabbok and the cities of the hill country and wherever Yahweh our God forbade us it's a little recap on what happened there. So uh, moving into Isaiah chapter 33. All right, here we go. Woe to you who destroy, but you weren't destroyed, and who betray, but nobody betrayed you. When you have finished destroying, you will be destroyed. And when you have finished betrayal, you will be betrayed. Yahweh, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the thunder, the peoples have fled. When you lift yourself up, the nations are scattered. Your plunder will be gathered as the caterpillar gathers. Men will leap on it as locusts leap. Yahweh is exalted for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. There will be stability in your times, abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of Yahweh is your treasure. Behold, their valiant ones cry outside. The ambassadors of peace weep bitterly. The highways are desolate. The traveling man ceases. The covenant is broken. He has despised the cities. He doesn't respect man. The land mourns and languishes. Lebanon is confounded and withers away. Sharon is like a desert, and Bashan and Carmel are stripped bare. Now I will arise, says Yahweh. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You will conceive chaff. You will give birth to stubble. Your breath is a fire that will devour you. The peoples will be like the burning of lime, 
like thorns that are cut down and burned in the fire. Hear you who are far off what I have done, and you who are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless ones. Who among us can live with the devouring fire? Who among us can live with everlasting burning? He who walks righteously and speaks blamelessly, he who despises the gain of oppressions, who gestures with his hands, refusing to take a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking at evil, he will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. His bread will be supplied. His waters will be sure. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty, and they will see a distant land. Your heart will meditate on the terror. Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed? Where is he who counted the towers? You will no longer see the fierce people, a people of deep speech that you can't comprehend, with a strange language that you can't understand. Look at Zion, the city of our appointed festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tent that won't be removed. Its stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But their Yahweh will be with us in majesty, a place of wide rivers and streams in which no galley with oars will go. Neither will any gallant ship pass by there, for Yahweh is our judge. Yahweh is our lawgiver. Yahweh is our king. He will save us. Your rigging is untied. They couldn't strengthen the foot of their mast. They couldn't spread the sail. Then the prey of a great plunder was divided. The lame took the prey. The inhabitant won't say, I am sick. The people who dwell therein will be forgiven their iniquity. Wow. All right, Matthew chapter 23. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. All things, therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, observe and do. But don't do their works, for they say and don't do. For they bind heavy burdens that are grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to help them. But they do all their works to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the fringes of their garments and love the place of honor at feasts and uh, the best seats in the synagogues, the salutations in the marketplaces, and to be called rabbi, rabbi by men. But you are not to be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and all of you are brothers. Call no man on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and as a pretense you make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you don't enter in yourselves, neither do you allow those who are entering in to who are entering in to enter. 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel around by sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of Ghana as yourselves. Woe to you, you blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obligated. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obligated. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? He therefore who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. He who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who has been living in it. He who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill, and cumin and have left undone the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. But you ought to have done these and not to have left the others undone. You blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and unrighteousness. You blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and of the platter, that's, uh, that its outside may become clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitened tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the tombs of the righteous and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we wouldn't have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you testify to yourselves that you are children of those who killed the prophets. Fill up then the measures of your fathers, you serpents, you offspring of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of Ghana? Therefore, behold, I send to you prophets, wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and prosecute from the city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you killed between the sanctuary and the altar. Most certainly, I tell you, all these things will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I would have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me from now on until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Wow. All right, closing out the day, Psalm 88, chapter 1 through 10. This is a song. I think we need a song. <laughs> a psalm by the sons of Korah for the chief musician to the tune of the suffering of affliction. A contemplation by Haman, the Azarahite. Yahweh, 
the God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Turn your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles. My life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down into the pit. I am like a man who has no help set apart from or set apart among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more. They are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have afflicted me with all your waves. You have taken my friends from me. You have made me an abomination to them. I am confined and I can't escape. My eyes are dim from grief. I have called on you daily, Yahweh. I have spread out my hands to you. Do you show wonders to the dead? Do the departed spirits rise up and praise you? And we will be finishing that tomorrow. Whoa, my goodness. This was a heavy one today, but much needed. I'm telling you, those scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees, they get me all riled up. And Jesus is so patient with them. You know, he sees them setting their traps and trying to get him into a word salad and getting him all mixed up. And it's not happening. And finally, Jesus lets them have it. He lets them have it with name calling and, and just blatant truth to how they are behaving. And I love every second of it. So <laughs> it was a heavy day though. I will admit that. So um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this day of reading, this day of uh, 146. Um, think about those words, especially, I mean, it was nice to, um, have a recap in Deuteronomy. Isaiah was powerful, but really think about those words in Matthew and, um, think about them in real time for 2023, because I fear that many leaders have possibly, Turn people away from Christ. Think about the words that Jesus says to them. All right, we don't have to judge them. We don't have to judge our leaders. But let's go back and let's, let, let's hear what Jesus said to them and how he felt. And we can apply it to our lives in 2023. So thank you for stopping by today. Hopefully tomorrow will be a little lighter. Um, please join me for tomorrow, which will be day 147. And I will see you then. Bye.